Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome. We continue ANOVA. In this lecture, we will discuss estimation of model parameters and test of assumptions. Test of assumptions. So, let us see the contents. So, first estimation of model parameters followed by confidence interval for model parameters this uh, estimation of model parameters followed by confidence interval does mean that point and interval estimate. Then as there are there are many comparisons possible here. So, simultaneous confidence interval another concept which is important. Then the different tests and they are uh, tests, test, uh, test of assumptions. So, different assumptions and their tests like normality and homoscedasticity as assumption and actually uh, this again taken from the same book design analysis of experiment by Montgomery. Let us now see the uh, model, model is y i j ANOVA model mu plus tau i plus epsilon i j. So, what are the model parameters here mu and tau i? In addition, you require to compute also errors, which is basically after computation is known as residuals. So, what we want to estimate? We want to estimate, we want to make grand mean, we want to estimate treatment effect, treatment effects, we want to estimate residuals. Okay. So, already I have given you already because uh, if you recall the general data 1 to like i then it is a and this side 1 to dot 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 j and then n you, you will find out that somewhere y i j is there and the corresponding y i dot bar and the grand average is y dot dot bar. I have given you earlier. So, this mu estimate grand mean estimate is grand average from the data point and then individual mean estimate is individual label means. Then tau i estimate is mu min, mu i minus mu mu estimate minus mu i estimate which is basically y i dot bar minus y dot dot bar. Then another estimate will be residual. So, treatment third one is residual. Residual means that is basically if I say residual epsilon i j cap then this is nothing but observed value minus predicted value, observed value minus predicted value. I am writing again, writing again because there is a there is some y i j cap is y epsilon i j cap is y i j minus y i j cap. Okay. So, this two this is basically. So, what is y i j? y i j is mu plus tau i plus epsilon i j. Now, what will be then y i j cap? This will be mu cap plus tau i cap. So, again tau i is basically that is mu cap plus tau i is mu i cap minus mu cap. So, this is nothing but mu i cap which is nothing but y bar i dot. 
so that mean the predicted value is the individual level average then residual is individual observations minus yi cap then this will be yij minus y bar i cap so this is estimate of residuals okay this is what is known as estimation now <coughs> we are primarily interested to know two things one is that estimate of mu i similarly estimate of tau i which is mu i cap then your tau i cap so th then what do you require you require to know the point estimate which is which is point estimate which is mu i cap point estimate is y bar i dot and you also require to know interval estimate that means 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval so in order to know the uh, interval estimate you require to know the distribution of y i cap what will be the distribution of y i cap you have to you have to know it for the time being we can say that this is basically mu i and sigma square by n if if y i j is distributed and mu i and sigma square then y i cap y bar i i dot bar this will be mean value will be same mean value and variance part will be sigma square by number of observation sigma square by n if you know this then you can you can go for interval estimate now here what if, what interval estimate you want you want interval estimate of this so as a result you require to know the sigma square value sigma square that estimate is nothing but here mac by that is mac sigma square will be mse or other way you can we can write like this ma suffix e so please keep in mind mac is an estimate of the variability of y across different levels okay so i hope that you understand it now how to get it so if i create a my random variable y i dot cap minus it expected value divided by square root of variance then this will follow which distribution here now z and uh, sigma is not known estimate of t distribution so t distribution this will be minus t this will be plus t what will be the degree of freedom for t what is available after calculation uh, calculation of the parameters like variance uh, that means your availability will be n minus a here okay so what do you do then your case is something like this t distribution this side plus t n minus a this is minus t n minus a suppose you consider alpha by 2 this side and alpha by 2 this side then your l equal to minus t n minus a alpha by 2 and u equal to t alpha by 2 n minus a so probability l less than equal to that y bar minus expected value of y i dot bar minus expected value of y i dot bar divided by square root of variance of y i dot bar this will be less than equal to u equal to 1 minus alpha you want this this is what we have we have written 
here that L value is this will be alpha by 2 and this will become alpha by 2. So, now you know this this the what will happen then that means minus t n minus a alpha by 2 less than y i dot bar minus mu i divided by square root of m a c by n because y i this sigma square is m a c by n less than less than or less than equal to y i dot bar minus uh, uh, sorry equal to plus t n minus a alpha by 2. So, the resultant quantity will be what you see resultant will be y i dot bar minus t alpha by 2 n minus a variance part mu i this is the confidence interval 1 into 1 minus an alpha percent confidence interval for mu i. Okay. Now, now what will happen for uh, the two, two difference between two treatment two, two treatments. So, we were interested to know mu i minus mu j because suppose what is the tau i tau i is mu i minus mu what is tau j tau j equal to mu j minus mu then if I want tau i minus tau j this will be then mu i minus mu j. Okay. So, if you want to know the difference between two pigment then what will happen the response uh, what is uh, mu i minus mu j estimate that will be y i dot j bar minus y j dot bar this will be um, our uh, random variable variable of interest and its standard deviation uh, the same way you will compute and you will find out this that y i bar y i dot bar minus y j dot bar minus t alpha by 2 n minus a root over 2 m a c by n less than equal to this less than equal to this this is plus sorry sorry it is ok correct y i dot bar minus y dot j dot bar plus so, this is plus and this is minus y 2 m a c by n is coming because you have y y i sigma square by n plus sigma square by n ok. So, because of the difference between these two. So, this formula so, what will happen now you are suppose you are comparing how many means suppose there are a means because a labels means a means. So, if you compare all together n c a, a, a sorry a c 2 comparison pairwise comparison will be there pairwise comparison. So, if I have 3 that means then y 1 bar suppose mu 1, mu 2 and mu 3. So, mu 1 versus mu 2, mu 1 versus mu 3, mu 2 versus mu 3. So, 3 comparisons possible. Now, every time if I consider here 100 into 1 minus alpha percent error a eh, confidence here 1 minus alpha percent confidence here also 1 minus alpha percent confidence. So, as all those things are basically con we are considering simultaneously what will happen basically suppose if 1 minus alpha is 0 0.9 for 3 case then 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 I mean 8.81 into 0 0.9 that means 9 to 729. So, the collectively what will happen your overall confidence level confidence level reduced to this. this will reduce to this one. So, what happened in order to protect this that suppose you want to become 90 per 5 percent confident in order to protect this the if you have p number of comparisons or r number of comparisons. Suppose here what you do basically every time you the alpha this alpha you equally divide divided by r. So, instead of 100 into 1 minus alpha you do 100 into 1 minus r alpha. So, you here it is 100 into 1 minus r alpha 100 into 1 minus r alpha like this. So, what do I mean then suppose I want this is some result t distribution 
you want this side alpha by 2, this side alpha by 2. Suppose you have sorry, suppose first comparison pair this. first this side and this side suppose this and this is this. So, this side alpha is coming this also alpha alpha by 2 is coming now the resultant will become less. So, as a result here instead you are writing alpha by 2 here alpha by 2 alpha by 2 alpha by 2 instead of the, for 2 for 2 compare pairs and uh, difference I am talking about here. Instead of then what you are basically doing you are making this portion this portion smaller. So, you have this so for every every individual you require this. So, every one you now make it even smaller r by so alpha by 2 r this side this side also alpha by 2 r. So, if you make stricter confidence then when you collectively multiply them if they are independent. So, ultimately you will result into 1 minus alpha into 100 percent C r. So, as a result this is known as bone friendly approach. So, this bone friendly approach is giving this one is so everything as it is only T alpha by 2 r when you have r number of comparisons. This is known as simultaneous confidence interval. Simultaneous confidence this is the individual confidence interval interval this is another individual confidence interval simultaneous one may be like this. So, that mean this portion this portion this will, will be out simultaneously collectively it is a it is a ellipse kind of thing. Okay. So, in order to capture or take care of this portion you are dividing by r and, and ultimately when you multiply. So, this uh, this means in this zone or the hyper uh, the ellipsoid level you will be able to do it. Okay. So, this is the formula. So, simultaneous two treatment means also similar case here two different treatments here I said that the treatment difference or two different treatment first treatment and second treatment it may be two difference two difference. So, then how do we treat R? R will be number of treatment when you are going for treatments simultaneously when you are going for treatment uh, different uh, pairs. So, the r will be number of pairs that is the that is the issue. So, y i bar minus y j and then again t by alpha by this one. Okay. Let me repeat here what happened you are comparing uh, finding out the confidence interval for single mean and alpha by 2 is the level of significance. Here you are saying there are R treatments, you require R different uh, confidence level of interest, but they are occurring simultaneously. So, you want the simultaneous part. So, alpha by R that is what you are considering. Then here what happened that dif to, uh, difference in two treatment means only one pair. Here what happened you are considering all the simultaneously all the pair. So, by r is coming. So, if I have 3 pairs or 3 treatment in the first case, if I choose alpha equal to 0 0.05 then alpha by r will be 0 0.05 by 3. Then when I say t al alpha by 2 r then it will be nothing but t 0 0.05 by 2 into 3. So, you have to and, and then according and also n minus a is the degree of freedom you find out from table what is this value. This approach is known as bone Ferroni approach. Okay. So, um, so, this is what is confidence interval estimation. Now, what happened I will tell you very quickly something called the an assumption of ANOVA. Now, what are the assumptions? We say error is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma square homoscedasticity. Suppose, this side y i j and this side your fact a a level 1 
then label 2, then your label i, then label a. Then what will happen here if you take n observation, suppose your data represent like this, here it should be like this, here maybe it is like this, here it may be like this. This is what is the variability part in y for different labels. This spread should be equal, that is what we are saying sigma square. This is known as homoscedasticity. So, this is this is one of the assumptions. Here we have written common variance, that means the variance across different level equal. Another one I said it is normally distributed also. Normally distributed that also you require to test. So, you also require to test normality. So, I already told you how to do this kind of test that means the normality test and homoscedasticity test we will explain. Another assumption is that every observations are independent and they must be identical to identically distributed mean if they are coming from normal population all are coming from normal population with that particular parameters of normal distribution. If they are coming from some other uh, population uh, it is true for everybody, but all are independent and identically distributed. And the effects of factors are additive in nature means if you increase factor level from 1 to 2 the, the effect in on response will be same if you increase from 2 to 3 that additive effects what we are talking about. So, you have already seen this quantile quantile plot in, in, in normal distribution uh, lecture I have showed you how to develop the quantile quantile plot and this plot was actually shown to you. So, quantile quantile plot means you find out cumulative probability then corresponding z value then object value order object value versus order z value you plot you will get a so straight line like uh, like plot and if it is straight line then it is normally distributed if it is deviating from the step line significantly then it is not normal. And for equality of uh, variance or homoscedasticity purpose you require to do Bartlett test Bartlett ok. So, what is Bartlett test? In Bartlett test we assume that uh, null hypothesis is the variances are equal sigma 1 square equal to sigma 2 square equal to sigma s square alternate hypothesis is at least one of the variances different from the others ok. So, then what you require? You require a appropriate statistics that will ultimately talks about uh, 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 about the um, null hypothesis k um, under null hypothesis some appropriate statistics and that statistics is chi square what is what is basically developed by uh, Bartlett. So, what is Bartlett has done that chi square is 2.3026 into q by c this is the quantity which follows chi square distribution with a minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, if you ask me what how it is it, it is derived it is not your job it is the statistician who has, who has made it, but let has done it. So, this quantity now q and c formula is given. So, my request to all of you go through the chapter 3 of Montgomery and find out this formula and this is the formula for q and c because other other um, values are known if you data is available to you ok. And then this quantity follows chi square distribution with uh, with a minus 1 degrees of freedom find out the threshold al alpha and accordingly you do the test the way normality test is uh, sorry the way hypothesis test is done ok. Thank you very much, but we have some more points to tell some examples like the, uh, the Bartlett test for the first example radar scope example. Here what happened using Bartlett test what we have found out that chi square computed one is 1.97, but tabulated one is 5.99. So, that means the tabulated one is much more than the computed one. So, you you, you cannot act reject null hypothesis fail to reject null hypothesis. So, that means the variability across the uh, labels are uh, not different there is equality of 
equality of variances across different levels of ground clutter. Now, the in the second case power factor level case also we found out that chi square is 0.43 and computed one will be will be much more because you know the computed one will be a minus 1. So, 4 minus 1 is 3 and alpha and alpha and then like this like you will calculate for certain alpha point 0 0.05 with 3 some value will that value will be there. But uh, here although I have not given this one, but in Montgomery book that is available what is this value from table you see it is uh, you have to see it. There is no evidence that claim that all five that 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 variances um, are the same. This is the same conclusion this value in the plot of the residual. So, okay, these are the some plots later on. Anyhow, you must see that computed chi square, tabulated chi square, computed chi square less than tabulated, fine, the variances are equal. Uh, in fact, there is another method for homoscedasticity checking that is known as modified Levin method. What is there in modified Levin method? So, you find out the median for each level from each level of data. For example, suppose this is the data set, this is my level 1 and these are the observations. Find out the median of each. Le second level out of these 5 observ 6 observations find out the median, third level find out the median, fourth level find out the median. Then subtract each row data by the respective median not mean and then you will be getting this kind of data. This data is nothing but this minus median and the mod of that data only. That means, if you go back d i j equal to mod of y i j minus y i median. So, then you are from this original data you are getting the deviation data. Now, you use traditional ANOVA with the with the deviation data and the, if there is difference then mean of these deviations you just test. If the mean of differences across different levels are different then the variance are different otherwise this is equal. Okay. So, here with, an, with another interesting example we found out that using modified Levin test we found out that p value is less than 001, computed value is 76.07 and then tabulated will be much lower. So, what I can say that there is there is a difference. For example, in the first level this is the this is the spread, second level this is the spread, third level this is the spread, fourth level this is the spread. So, what is the spread here then? So, the error spread is also sigma square plus. So, level 1 2, 3, 4. First level spread is like this. You just see the minim minimum to maximum. This is minimum to maximum spread like this. Second one, second one like this. Third one, third one like this. And in fourth one, fourth one also like this. So, it is if you add this, it is basically making a funneling effect. So, when the, your data represent this kind of funneling effect either towards left funneling towards right or it may so happen here is the maximum, here is lower, here is lower, here is lower. So, may be funneling to the left. So, when your, your data suppose this is y i j and these are the factor level a level 1, 2, 3, 4 different level. So, if your data represent like this then funneling right or funneling left then there is change in there is there is variability difference in variability. Usually we not use y i j we use the residual epsilon i j residual in the residual plot you will, you will come to know all those things. Okay. So, if your data rep represent random pattern something like this whatever may be the level but these are all random mean here, 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 there is no no funneling left or funneling uh, right, then this is this is homoscedastic data. Otherwise, it is a heterogeneous heteroscedasticity is there, variances across different levels are not same, very important one. Okay. 
So then I, I hope that you now you are comfortable, you will become comfortable with ANOVA in the previous lecture and this lecture uh, for last two, uh, in fact last three lectures we talk about ANOVA and we have given starting from ANOVA model, then, then partitioning the observation, then partitioning the sum squares, then ANOVA table, then F test that is hypothesis test and then what happened we, we estimated the parameters, then the we have seen the mean and conf, uh, point estimation and conf, uh, interval estimation, we introduced a concept called simultaneous uh, confidence interval using bone Ferroni approach and then the test of assumptions, test of assumption, normality test, variance test and then there will be there will be test like uh, independent test, independent observation test that means the data are not, not related to each other. So, there are so many things. Okay. So, thank you very much.